Hello. For this episode of 20 Years of 1998, I thought I'd do something a little bit different and make this episode a bit more personal. Very few games can claim to have changed my life forever, but Metal Gear Solid is absolutely one of those games. The main character and his struggle provided me with a positive model for how to approach and navigate a messy, confusing, chaotic world. And it also helped me to learn the importance of questioning the things that I'd been told. In addition to that, Metal Gear Solid has been the starting point for some of the most fulfilling friendships in my life. This game, for me, has been a wave of positivity that I don't see stopping anytime soon. October 21st, 1998. We'd obtained reports of a cinematic and highly engaging stealth game unleashed upon Japan the previous month, and it was about to explode in the United States. The whole thing rocked, and our noses have been snorting it up ever since. The story follows a lone clandestine operative, codenamed Solid Snake, as he infiltrates a nuclear weapons disposal facility on Shadow Moses Island. The site has been taken over by next generation special forces being led by members of Foxhound, his former unit. They've taken hostages and have issued demands to the White House under threat of a nuclear strike. Snake's mission is to rescue key hostages, investigate whether or not the terrorists have the capability to make a nuclear strike, and stop them if they do. What began as an already touchy and highly nuanced situation would quickly unravel into a web of lies and backroom politics, and Snake would eventually come face to face with disturbing revelations that call into question everything about his entire life. Metal Gear Solid marked a turning point in the evolution of video games by showing how well a complex narrative could be communicated through a game, despite the limitations of the medium, and perhaps even because of them. It wasn't totally unheard of for a game to actually have an interesting story, but it was still uncommon enough that a game could make a splash by putting in the effort. Games had been trying to imitate movies for years, and this was no exception. But the difference was that Metal Gear Solid's ambitions were elevated by its conviction and style, and perhaps most importantly, complete and total madness. What's with these guys? It's like one of my Japanese animes. Embraced by fans, but also a focal point of detractors, the complicated plotting and lengthy dialogue scenes of Metal Gear Solid were unapologetically expanded upon in the sequels. The series was created, written, and directed by Hideo Kojima. And while it's unclear whether he ignored criticism or intentionally made things crazier in response, his writing, as well as his direction during the promotional stages of later games, have since proved to the world that he is, in fact, the great high troll king of the universe. The first real auteur in the medium, the scope of his creative control over the series, has given it a unique feeling and tasty flavor that cannot be imitated by conventional design-by-committee game development. As a result, every aspect of these games, even the outlandish and bizarre elements, have a purpose and demand attention. This has naturally attracted and sustained a large and devoted following surrounding him and his work, and he is perhaps the most discussed and analyzed mind in the history of video games. While far from the first stealth game, you could say that it did for that genre some of the same things Doom did for first-person shooters. And like Doom, the gameplay can seem basic when compared to later games of its type. But with that simplicity comes a sense of purity, where slipping past your enemies unnoticed, or creeping up behind them to crack their necks, is neither too difficult to be frustrating, or too easy to be boring. And before all the sneaking around can wear out its welcome, the whole thing gets shaken up by some of the most memorable boss fights ever. Each one of these encounters acts like a miniature dramatic character study, and more often than not, despite how hard they were just trying to kill you, the overall mood is bittersweet when you've finally beaten them. And in charge of them, Liquid Snake. A mirror for the protagonist, and a stubbornly unkillable foe, Liquid Snake is an intelligent and ambitious menace right up until the very end. After all, 
there's nothing more sinister than a long-haired white guy with perfect enunciation. Ah, it's okay. He's still dead. Liquid Snake casts a long and destructive shadow over future events in this series' timeline, which is especially tragic, considering that his own personal quest was to free himself from the legacy of another major character in previous games. Someone who still managed to be monumentally important in this game, despite his total absence from it. In fact, legacy is the most central theme of the series. The meaning, nature, and importance of legacy, and the changing ways that new generations interact with it, is explored from a different angle in every single game. Metal Gear Solid is special. It's crazy, ambitious, confusing, and weird. After all, it's art, and it's aware that it's art. Sometimes it may come off as a bit preachy, but it's never anything less than fascinating or compelling. The particular flavor won't please everybody, but it's one of those games that I think everyone should at least try, because if it does resonate with you, it'll stick with you for the rest of your life, and might even help inspire you to be a better person. Twenty years later, it's actually kind of appropriate that a game about legacy is starting to be passed down to the children of those who first played it. And also, it's amusingly ironic that a series about stealth should demand such attention. It looks like our little diversion got their attention. Now's your best chance to slip in unnoticed. What was that noise? Huh? Mr. Barnes.